place the perfect place where your communication center, your operation center comes to exist even in your post disaster. Remember it coming up with tsunami, the devastation that happened in action, for example. Destruction that lasted for many, many years. The biggest challenge at the beginning were the people are. No one knew how many people were lost. I had a serious. Does so, about foreign tour EPX is it for military purpose or is it for commercial purpose? The both, dual. 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 Yeah, so, so this is a military or defense version. This is uh, the basic commercial version. Okay. Uh, the project itself is a joint development with Bell and the Subaru okay. based on the current EPI. Okay. Bell has the current the 412 series as a 412 EPI. It's a currently the, the current model. The 412 EP, a 412 series is probably 20 years history. Then, the, in addition to the EPI, we enhance the capability, mainly transmission, uh, increase the power. Okay. Uh, so, the, uh, and also the uh, dry run capability. The, the head of the, the key part is the transmission. Okay. Engine output change the direction, so that the transmission really we relied on the transmission. Then, so the transmission is because of gears okay. they will need oil. Sure. But if something happens that lost oil, if we lose the oil, it's a really matter. So therefore, we put the strength and more. Then, 30 minutes the margin can fly okay. longer without oil. So it gives the pilot much more safety margin. That is the improvement point. So this is a military transport mm. helicopter, right? Nah, transport or utility, we say. Because not only the transport, but also uh, we can do various uh, activities. For example, uh, the good example is the uh, do you know the year 2011, March 11, there is a big earthquake in Japan. After having uh, that the big first the earthquake, within 15 minutes, it's take off and uh, shoot the video of the tsunami coming. So that then deliver the video, video uh, image to the head office and uh, to the government. So that is not only uh, uh, transporting goods, but uh, so such, say search and rescue, or it's also used for the so, so, uh, res evacuating or rescuing people. So let's say during a war kind of scenario when the aircraft is used, so what's the resistance against enemy fire? Aim? Sorry, aim? Enemy fire, uh, okay. how's the resistance? Okay, good. That's a good question. There's a couple of equipment. For example, uh, it, it's, it's, it, this is a model, so it doesn't have, but uh, um, anti-radar uh, anti warning system. Um, normally put somewhere here or there, front or back here, and also uh, IR jammers, and also uh, chaff dispensers, for example. And of course, the, the Depends, but uh, we can equip some uh, launching system or uh, weapon system too. Well, it depends on uh, the government. or maybe sometimes the gun side. But um, this type of weapon, but mainly using in the battlefield, just carrying the people or about uh, rescuing the people. Okay, so let's say that during mid-flight there's a failure with the engine or mm. rotor. Mm. So can it come back safely on ground? Uh, the, this is, the, therefore, this is a two engine, twin pack. Okay. So it's much, uh, theoretically, it's better than the one engine. But uh, uh, UH-13 itself is being a four, it's a quite a long history with one engine. Uh, then, uh, in, uh, as I mentioned, that the biggest wave in Japan, it was the, it's a previous model, 
okay. uh, UH1J. It has only one engine, but uh, operational uh, ratio was 95 percent. So it's okay. quite reliable. But uh, anyway, in addition to that, the two engines, so one engine out, it's much more marginal. Okay, thank you.